Then you assume you have a partition, yeah, eh? Partition, which might be finite or infinite. I will say then what we need, and you form as usual the joins. which consists of all the N cylinders. Then you want to fix a point and then look at the partition elements as N gets bigger and bigger, so, the, so these partitions become small, cylinder becomes smaller and smaller, so you pick an X in, in omega and you want to look at the AN of X, which is, which is an N cylinder, namely the one that contains X. So it's a very classical problem to look at to look at the size of this cylinder. And this was the first way entropy or complexity was defined. So to, today we, we mostly remember the entropy by Kolmogorov. Kolmogorov's entropy, which is an averaging property, you simply write down, look at the linear growth rate of 1 over n h of capital H of n, and the capital H of n is the sum log of mu. Or you can also say this is the expected value of the nth information function, where the nth information function is simply the log of the mass of that cylinder there. So that was the definition which I believe dates from 1957. Preceding actually was the notion, the more localized notion by Shannon, which we nowadays know as the theorem of Shannon, Macmillan, Breiman. Then you do you look at a fixed point and you and you look at the decay rate of this. So this one kind of tells you the average decay rate of this should be like like the entropy, and this is exactly what it says, namely you look at the log of mu of a n of x over n, and then this goes to the entropy almost surely as n goes to infinity. Under the provision, of course, that mu is ergodic, this is sufficient. So historically actually precedes this one here, because it goes back to 1948 for Markov measures and converts was in probability and then it was generalized 57 I believe by Macmillan to ergodic measures and conversions in L1 and 58 or 60 by Prime and then to ergodicity and almost sure convergence for finite for finite partitions, for infinite partitions, and the same thing was gone through by Carlson and Chung Forth for Markov and then for ergodic measures with the same conversions properly, proper, uh, properties, namely first in probability and then almost surely. So this is when A is countably infinite under the assumption, of course, that H of A has to be finite, so they have a finite entropy. Bigger pardon? For general transformation, well, this is for, a, you need an ergodic transformation for that. For f well, for originally for fine, uh, well, uh, uh, generating, generating partition, yes. Sure, sure, generating partition. I didn't say that, yeah. <laughs> what I think?
Thank you. Thank you. So I want to look a little bit more closely at this conversion of properties, and then the next progress was made by Ibrahimov. In 1960, who showed that there is a center limit theorem for this, namely the probability of if we take i n of x and you subtract this over sigma root n converges to the normal distribution, this bigger equal and some t converges normal distribution, which is the ordinary what we think it is. This one here, under the conditions, the conditions are twofold, namely, once that mu is alpha mixing and is L1 Gibbs. L1 Gibbs is an approximation property that you kind of can mimic. The, it's nearly, it sort of looks like as if it was a Gibbs state, but isn't quite. So alpha mixing was, the assumption of alpha mixing is that if you look at the intersection of two sets and one of them is pulled back, then this is less than alpha and this goes to zero at a, at a minimal rate. And this B consists of N cylinders and this C is allowed to be anything in forward sigma algebra. The alpha is supposed to be a go a little bit quicker than linearly, so if we take a power less than that, that should be finite for some alpha less than one. Now the L1 Gibbs property is this approximation pro property, namely you take this minus log of px node and you condition on the, on the past. Well, you want to have this converge in such a way so this converges to some f as n goes to infinity so that this is a little bit quicker than a, a square for some s less than one half. So these are the properties needed there in order to do that. Well, that was strengthened by Philip and Stout. In this big paper, in this book, from AMS book from 1975, and then that said that, in fact, one has the almost sure invariance principle which means the, the IN looks like, like a Brownian motion plus an error term, which is one half minus delta. Well, the delta, I believe, is one over 200, 296, if I'm not quite right. It's some funny number, but they're not quite optimized. The conditions are very similar to this one there. Uses exactly the same setup as Ibrahimov did, but this is kind of a little bit quick. Minus 336 and the f n minus f are supposed to be sort of like n to the minus 48, something like this. It's asking for kind of a lot. In particular, the one I don't like, of course, is the second one, not too much the alpha mixing property. So now I want to, I want to strengthen this result, and what we get is the following. So. This is, I believe, for finite alphabets, finite state space. So I want to, in particular, I want to get rid of this. There's a slight price to be paid to see that one here. So the condition is beta mixing. The beta mixing property is when you write something down like this, except you look at the individual variations and they have to be summable. inside, and now you sum over all, all cylinders, and C is whatever cylinder you want, doesn't matter, this shall be better, 
this shall be less than beta of some k, and of course for all n and for all all m. So this is when a, me a measure me uh, is beta mixing. In the hierarchy, it stands a little bit above the alpha, but right is below the phi mixing, which is below the psi mixing property. Well, if I'm interested in infinite alphabets, then I also have to impose some some moment condition, like in the in the plain version of the Schoenmakin primary theorem, there is the the entropy condition, which says the entropy is finite. So here we have to ask for a little bit more. So if we put now kW of a for some arbitrary partition as simply the W of moment to the W, or simply as expected value of I, whatever, A sub A, uh, to the W. Well, you immediately see that these don't grow too fast. They are less or equal to constant times N to the W using a, con a convex convexity argument. So then we can write on the following theorem. So if mu is beta mixing, with some rate, P, and in case the alphabet is infinite, we want to ask that this is finite for some W bigger than 5, and A should be, at most, countably infinite. Well, if it's finite, of course, this is a vacuous condition there. This shall be bigger than 7 plus... Oh, gracious, I can't remember this. What is it again? And where did I write it? Well, 7 plus 30 for double... Well, we should want to know it, right. Plus 30 for double, that's a number I got. Minus 5, that's, well, that's, five, that's where the condition for 5 comes on. Then we have this almost sure invariance principle. And what do we get? Well, we get that this looks like a Brownian motion. And we get an error term of n one half minus a delta, where the delta is a third minus 10 over 3 p. A third. Well, that's the one I got. Minus 10 over 3 p plus 30. It doesn't look at awfully bad. It would look a bit better than one about 296. Well, you notice, of course, this condition is gone. This has been, well, this has been weakened on this side, but it's strengthened on this side here. Well, I still have, can still say something more. Well, there are, of course, implicit results in there, for instance, what we get is the moment estimates are quite kind of trivial, but if you look at this one here, if you look at the sum of A of, so this integral of minus H of A N to the W, then this is less or equal as constant times n to the W half, which of course you would kind of expect just looking at the just looking at the variance. And you also get that sigma of a n, which is the K2 minus the entropy squared normalized, is some sigma squared plus big O of one over n to the one to a quarter. One to the quarter. Well, an application of this is the following. If you take, if you look at the recurrence time, well, what do you do? Well, you take an x in omega, and then you define r sub n of x, which is the infimum of the smallest number, or minimum, whatever. Of, of the first j, so the tj to the x, going to line a n of x again. 
So if you do it in a symbolic fashion, you write down a string, you label all the partition elements, so that would be the orax here. The first n elements, of course, determine that cylinder an, and you simply wait until, you, until this one occurs again. Here it shows up. So this one here is the Rn of x. I can continue here. Then we know from Ornstein and Weiss that if mu is ergodic, we get a nice limit, namely Rn of x. If we take a log of this over n goes towards the entropy, almost surely as n goes to infinity. Of course, you need a uniformity to be seen anywhere. But if you look at, at the distribution of it, you get, the, you get this one, namely that the, that the Rn, the log of, log of Rn of x is again, satisfies central limit theorem plus an error term which is n to the one half minus delta for any, this is almost surely, for any delta less than 1 over 8. There's a previous result, though, in this, which is based on, on Philip and Stout and was done by Kontonianis. Well, the conditions here, conditions are like in, so mu is beta mixing and and p has to be bigger than 7. And actually, right, what I need is I need a is a finite alphabet, which means the condition on the, this condition here becomes, vacuum, becomes vacuous. So it's only this condition there. So p has to be strictly bigger than 7. Then it is true. There's no condition to anything else. The Contonianis result, which goes back to 1997, I believe, has the ASIP. If mu is, well, it's exactly the same condition that Philip and Stout, alpha makes an L1 Gibbs. Here with, what is it, alpha of k should be like k to minus 336, and f minus fn, L1 norm, should be like n to the minus 48. Then he gets this same result, then the Rn of x is sigma Wn plus one-half minus delta, with the same delta, one over 200. I believe it's one over 296, I'm not quite sure about this. All right, I guess my time is up. So thank you for the attention.